So I have a lot of money on the line here, and tonight I am joined by the one, the only, Chris Enrio Mead. How are we doing tonight? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm doing pretty well. I think this should be a pretty good game. Awesome. So we're both looking forward to this, and uh, if F Chris can press that F key, that'd yeah, be delightful. I'm working on it. Um, so, guys, we are actually watching Avenue against Isuba. So the first map is already decided. It will be Crash. We see Avenue on the attacking side. But just to give you guys an idea so far, Avenue yesterday, I believe, actually drew with Western Wolves. Now, if you tuned in yesterday, you saw them absolutely stomping DL Gaming, I believe their name was. But uh, let's see what a... Uh, his Ezor is up to now. He's made his way straight through mid. Drops out a nade straight into Stream's face. Through mid does finally get taken down by Trunk, just holding that red car angle. But he was very aggressive there, not seeming too worried about taking on the Super forces. Sex has made his way up to that mid frick, does drop down Strove. It's all a little bit tip for tack currently, leading in a three on three. Avenue kind of split up here, but they do finally get a tag onto, I believe it is Sexax at that mid-fridge, and Yo-Yo's really going for the frag here, he does get it eventually, just alleviating the pressure from mid. Now, only two men remain from Isuba, and I was speaking to the Avenue guys prior to this match, and they said, you know what, Crash isn't our best map, it's really not, so if we do well here, I'll be so happy. So now only Fint left for Isuba, he is the scope, so it's all, all very possible, he could go Stormy style and pick up a nice little 1v3 clutch, but he's currently struggling with the ladder, so let's see how that goes, does get a little bit of fire from mid. Bomb is now down and ticking in A with 40 seconds on the board. He's got a time limit to this clutch. Can he even make the odds? Let's find out. Peeking towards A. Drops down from Sandbag. All players are actually in A, so he could somehow sneak in. But with 25 seconds almost on the board, this is getting a little bit close. Fire raining down from above. It is from A roof. And there's Yo-Yo picking up the first round for Avenue. Now, as I said, we are joined by Enrio, the wonderful player from uh, Team Phantasmagoria. How do you think Avenue actually picked up that round then? That was, you know, very, very unusual impressed. Yeah, really decided. impressed. I mean, they they managed to go A, and I mean, Sex has actually had a really excellent position at the fridge, and the Super actually took middle quite nicely, but Avenue hmm. recovered, and they managed to get into A, and impressive first round. Yeah, indeed. I think you summed it up really well there. As Sexax did make his way into mid, but it didn't even seem to make the odds. Normally, if you're going A, and you get that pressure from mid from the defending side, you're so cautious, you know, like as an SMG yourself, going A, you know, as an SMG, let's say, if you think there's one in link and you're stuck at gens, that caution is in your mind straight away. So it's really impressive work from Avenue to get into A, get that bomb down, having three players alive to defend it. So really well played to them. And now we can see a little bit of slow play coming out. How do you think uh, Avenue are playing this one? They seem to have just kind of been a bit slapdash, but it seems to be working. How do you see this one going? There's two players left for Isuba. Do you think they'll go think, B or the A? No, they're definitely going B. I mean, you can tell from the minimap, but I think they're being gutsy about it. I mean, they're, they're being confident. They're not They're not letting the occasion get to them. Yeah, so let's pick it up with Trunk here. Stuck on this B-bomb. There is two players kind of converging on the site. He does get a little bit of fire coming towards him from that hardware garden. Must have heard him drop, but Joey there just shut down Trim, so it's all on Trunk, and this B gutsy push, as uh, Enrio said, is paying off, and now the rotate's coming in thick and fast. Are they faking it out? Let's find out. Trunk now going through mid. He hears them running, hears the feet pitter pattering towards A, and they have made it inside. Does put the player on the bomb site, so now Trunk does know it's in the A plant, surely, as it's ringing out above him. There's a player literally in front of him, and there's Joey, uh. the fantastic Deagle, just denying him any chance. And what a rotate. As you said, really gutsy play. If you were Isuba right now, how the hell would you change this up? I think they just got to keep doing what they do. I think they should just expect Avenue to actually push places. I mean, Trunk, Trunk's aim just let him down there. I mean, he could have easily taken down Joey. Um, I mean, it's too early to call if there's, you know, too early to say if they need to change anything up. But I think um, if they keep doing what they do, then they should get the rounds. Exactly, so let's see what they've done. They've gone for that really confident A push once again now, leaving Troom having to go huge. Trunk alongside him, but there's two players right around him. There's Strove darting up the stairs. Troom shuts him down and punishes him for even thinking about it. And this looks more like the Isuba we know and love, folks, with now only one man remaining for Avenue. Let's see if he can actually get anywhere near A. Can't do it. So what changed then for Isuba? Because they seem to really lock down that A site. Was that <laughs> Lit just Literally nothing. It was? it was Yeah, it was a case of just going back to, to what they know and, and doing exactly what they're doing. I mean, that's just Call of Duty 4 summed up for you in one round. You know, keep doing what you do and you'll get the luck and you get the break, so uh, it definitely worked out for them. But I mean, I'd like to see him do a few more mid-pushes. I think, you know, on Crash particularly, that, that is really effective. If you can control middle, especially with smart AK play, that, uh, that uh, Sex had managed to push up the fridge on the first round. If he can do that again, I reckon that uh, he'll be able to control middle. 
Yeah, for sure. So let's hope we can get some seats. It's on that sexy COD 4, because as soon as you do break through mid, it opens up so many opportunities to go huge. And that's why I love this. You know, you got to go larger than home. So let's see what we have as the uh, lineup tonight. Let's get in there from you, Chris, just to make sure we can jump back into this straight away. So for Avenue, it's Joey, Dark Zoo, Yo Yo. And that's Ezor. I could be wrong. Or is it Zizor? It's Zizor. Zizor. Yeah, there we go. That's what happens when you write your tag like that. I hate you. Strobe as well <laughs> alongside. So that's the five for Avenue who. Drew with Western Wolves. Now, I, as you guys surely know, Chuby is Enrio's brother. And have you actually spoken to Chuby about what the hell happened against Avenue here? Because to draw with Western Wolves as a team like Avenue, that's yeah, impressive. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think many people knew they, they were a good team. You know, um, I think I even played some of them at Adroids last year. And, you know, these are, they're actually quite young, from what I remember. They're, they're, young, they're young Dutch guys. So, I mean, I know recently they've changed a few of their plays. They've gone back to their old lineup. I mean, it seems pretty typical. Dutch teams to switch up at least every few months, <laughs> yeah. um, but they've done it again, and uh, I mean, they, they, they were really impressive against Western Wolves. I think Western Wolves, um, you know, I don't want to throw out too many excuses, but they haven't been playing much, especially with Fan. Um, I think they're going yeah. through transitional period, trying to find new tactics, where to play Fan. Yeah, of course. Um, so things are going to be a bit different, but you know, take nothing away from Avenue. They're, they're a good side, and they're probably one to watch. And I mean, in the first two rounds, you know, taking the first two rounds against the Zebra is, is uh, Pretty impressive, and um, definitely a team to watch in the future. Well, as you said, they aren't truly taking names. As soon as you beat someone, or even draw with someone like Western Wolves, and you're really bringing the pressure to someone like Super, you're taking on the bigger titles, and it's so good to see a younger team who may not, you know, already have been, you know, reaching the heights and picking up those old players, and really showing that you can still really challenge the older lineups these days if you work hard. And I think it's a Fantastic yeah, thing to I see. Mean, and, you know. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it's just a perfect example of, you know, what we want to see in COD 4 right now because, you know, people keep saying, well, you know, the top teams are pretty much made out of the same players. To an extent, <laughs> that's right. But, you know, if, if you stick with the lineup, you actually work at it, you know, train together, watch demos, um, you can quite quickly work your way up the leagues. I mean, you look at WinFact, for example, the Dutch team, they're already in yep. CGI and they, they made their way through really? two seasons from CGA into CGM, they won CGM comfortably, um, and it's really just because they, they had the same five Dutch guys, they managed to stick, which is pretty amazing, yeah. um, you know, it will reap, uh, you know, you reap your rewards eventually if you just yeah. stick together and who knows how far you can go and Avenue are definitely a team that, if they can stick together, um, that they can do pretty well. Yeah, for sure, and it, it's a fantastic kind of uh, idea to put into people's faces. So I can only hope, as I do love the underdogs, that Avenue really bring the game to Isuba right now. And just to get a little prediction from you, where do you see this game going? Because it is a best of three, and we already know that Isuba, you know, feel more confident on Crash, and with the attacking side leading the way so far, how do you think this game's going to go? Can I have a little prediction from you? I mean, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have to go safe and say Isuba. I mean, I, I, I watched them. I'm really, really happy that they've stuck together, firstly and foremost, because, you know, they had such a close game at Game Inject against the Nexus. Um, and they, you know, we couldn't beat them at Game Inject. We drew with them on Crossfire, and I'm talking about my team fan. Um, and they're really, really, really well stratted. They've, they've got their maps on lockdown. Um, they know what they're doing. So I'm happy to see that they've realized, okay, against the Nexus, losing against the Nexus, you know, there's no shame in that. They've stuck together. Um, and they're they're really well oiled machine. Can't see Avenue really really beating them here, but who knows? I mean, if Avenue can continue what they did and what they managed last night against Western Wolves, you know, we could see an upset. Well, for sure. So, ladies and gents in chat, do let us know what you guys think. Do you think Avenue, the up and coming young guns, can really take on the old dogs and show them what for? But I, I want the uh, the new guys to win it. I, I like an upset. I love the underdog and, you know, I like seeing people like Golden Oldies coming back from a huge deficit and beating Fragmasters on City Streets. Those games are what, you know, keep someone like me happy. But I'm going to pick up with Finter here, the scope for Isuba. He hasn't been making too much of an impact so far. He's on 1-2, to two, so maybe this round will uh, change up all the odds. Let's find out. So he's peeking from hardware. Johi, the opposing scope, drops down Sex Axe, the previously rather aggressive teammate, but Finter straight through the blue wall, drops down Strove. All even now, 4-4. Four, Scope's just exchanging frags here. Yo-Yo picking up one for himself onto Troom. Now he's super with only three players to the four of Avenue. Can they even up the A push coming in? And yo he with the bomb towards Jen's area. Very paradox-esque holding onto that bomb just to really keep it fresh and keeping the movement quite loose. You know, you can happily rotate as a scope. We do see Trunk, the only man remaining at A now, has to get moving. Spot Swan crossing up. Trunk now on the prowl with the SMG. Can he find these three frags that are waiting in A? Spot Yo-Yo drops him down with a lovely little headshot. 
three remain though. Bit of an uphill struggle by all accounts, and Joe, he went for a walk and got punished just for that. Trunk picking up another frag, and now there's one more in A. Can he get this one? He's a he seems very cautious of back A, and rightly so. Spots the head of the player. Can he get the frag? Yes, he can. Zizor dropped down, and one more to find. Trunk absolutely on fire this round. Who is the last man standing? It's Darks who drops around, punishes Trunk for even thinking of taking him down and avenging his fallen teammates. And now only 1v1. Misak against Darks who. Misak getting the fire out, but doesn't manage to tag up Darks who at all. So this could be Explosions the plot. And now planted. Avenue. Darks who just have to sit in and play carefully. This, you know, with the clock ticking. This round could be theirs. Darksu going for a walk, I believe. He's feeling confident. He's going for the lap of doom. He's feeling ready to take on Misak. Let's find out if Misak is even prepared for this. He isn't. His eyes are trained on lower A. Is he going to think of moving? Because Darksu is imminent and he's missed him. Guys, look to your right and left of Darksu. <laughs> wow. Darksu. That could have wow. ended badly. That could have ended atrociously. I've got to give credit to Darksu there for feeling so confident, but I can't believe it. Let's see if Zizor's going for a mid push here because we did like the way Avenue did it before. But what a round! Was it Trunk who was in A then? Yeah, I mean, he nearly won it for his team there, but it, yeah. I was just going to say, it's, it was that daring approach by Avenue that's winning, that won them the round. I mean, they nearly messed yep. it up, but, you know, <laughs> Darkie just showing that daring approach, walked all the way around and just about managed to catch Isaac there. So, yeah, it's paying off for them. Exactly, that gutsy play, that sexy COD 4 being thrown into your faces right now as Avenue are actually on the disadvantage. Let's see if they can pull it back. Let's see if Isuba. Once again, give away another round. The attacking side do have three rounds to so only one of the defensive side, which is rather unusual. Action going down in mid. Sexax under pressure from Hardware. You can see some of the players from Avenue really feeling confident enough to push it. Yo-Yo with a teammate alongside him. Who is that? I'm not too sure. There's Darksu who's just above him. Darky Zoo. I'm going to call him Darky because that is more than likely <laughs> his name. So... Troom left in a trunk on the prowl in hardware, surrounding himself by Avenue players, but missing them always by an inch. But he spots one finally towards that hardware. And the pillars does get tagged up for all of his work, has to dart out, but I believe there's going to be a player right next to him. And there he is, Yo Yo's there with the AK. Now only two remain to the three of Isuba. Can Avenue get into A? Joey with the bomb, taking it up to Stone. There's a player right in front of him, and Troom's there, punishes him, thinking we'd left that unguarded sex at spot in the last player I believe it's Yo-Yo by King's car there does tag him up but Yo-Yo darts away does spot one towards a area by that stone can he get the frag and he can't 30 seconds on the board and Misak pushes up and takes him down and he's super finally fending off that mid push what yeah they textbook change up? stuff textbook stuff from them they I mean they showed how to hold B you don't need to push up you can literally sit by the bomb and, and wait for your opponents to come to you so I uh, think it was really the, the first two frags at the beginning of the round that, that let them camp there, but, um, you know, textbook stuff. Yeah, so why don't you run through what's actually happening on their A-pushes for Avenue, because they seem to be doing it again, but they seem very happy to rotate, but is, is this a standard A-push, or are they doing anything different? What what, what kind of makes them unique? Because it seems to be super have learnt the ways so far, but what what was working for Avenue's A-push before? It's their nades. They managed to really scare Subo into, you know, thinking twice about getting in. And Darky actually used to manage to get in quite quickly. And as soon as he controls the bomb site, um, you know, he, he, the rest of his teammates can flood in. So they're not doing that. I think they need to get back to throwing their their pretty precise nades back A if they want to get A from Isuba. Exactly, and I, I'm sure you know how pivotal nades can be on this map, ladies and gents. God, I think we all saw that game on Crash. Oh, Vinter, I've got to say, he did just drop Yo-Yo straight through blue there with a lovely little wall bank. And it seems Isuba are once again on the go. I'll come back to the topic of you guys on Crash, but for now, <laughs> Let's see uh, no what needs, Isuba no can need. do. Oh no, we're going back there. Yohi <laughs> feeling confident, darting around with that scope. But uh, he's got to be careful. He's feeling so confident, but he's leaving himself so open to the five men remaining for Isuba. Tags coming out. Trim getting the better of Zizor there. And now only two remain for Avenue. And that uh, trunk made himself into top eight. Strove getting tagged up, but now going into A. His teammate does get dropped down, so it's all on his lonesome. Can he make the odds? Let's find out. Trunk does get tagged up by his own teammate, but Troom's there. The man's an absolute statue at back A, but why don't you just explain to us exactly how pivotal <laughs> nades can be on this map, especially on the defending and attacking side, and how it can vary, because, you know, obviously from your point of view, if you guys didn't notice, it was, it was, it was gamers checked, wasn't it, where it really did make a difference for you? Uh, you mean when, when we beat a Nexus in the first match? Well, yeah, when you beat them <laughs> well, the first in time the second, second match, not, it yeah. didn't go quite as well. No, I mean, they, they are pivotal because as an SMG, the first thing you want to do is, is look for gaps and nades. And as soon as you isolated them, you're going to try and exploit them. Um, and Crash, just like Backlots, are small maps. So really, if, if you get your nades right, you can stop those SMGs and you can let the round play out just as it is now. You can see Avenue, they can't get into A. Um, you know, and that's because credit to Isuba's nades. 
Uh, and as soon as you get that on lockdown, you're going to win the round, as long as you play discipline. So nades, utmost importance, both on attack and defense, because if you can use them on attack properly, um, they're a real weapon. For sure. So we do see the defending side actually stepping up their game just a touch, seeing the real class of Isuba coming out. So I'm going to pick it up with Finter here, who isn't actually top of the scoreboard. As you said, as soon as those SMGs were allowed to control A on the defensive side and get in there and not really be too fussed by the mates, they've stepped it up. You know, you can see Trunk on 10 to 6, Troon on 8 to 4, so really playing well. A bit of a mid to B push coming out, so I've got to flick across to Avenue, see what they're up to. Dark Suit's already in hardware with a teammate alongside him. And let's see if Isuba can just sit back and do what they did before. Lock it down where it matters, but Dark Suit is feeling confident. He's peeking a hell of a lot towards his hard area spots. The scope does get tanked up for even thinking of peeking at Yodo, dropping down Misak. But the B push is definitely on. Z jumping through Hardware Garden, and now only two people remain. Trunk really in trouble now towards that red car. Does get tagged up, and the players are converging exactly where he is. Troom now has to go huge, and he can't Very do nice. it because Strove jumped round. And that was literally, hey guys, want to learn how to take B? We'll show you right now. Yeah. They, they didn't even go Hardware that time that much. They let, I think they let an SMG get in there. But the rest of them, happily down B long. Do you happily think we'll see that again? Long. Well, I mean, it's it's really impressed that they all went together because that's you yeah. know that's how matches should work nowadays. You want to work together as a team, yeah. and especially if you're pushing places, you want to go together. None of this one after the other business. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, just like you said, how to take B as shown by Adam. Oh, Zizo, <laughs> absolutely sublime play there, taking down Finta and Misak in one foul swoop, but he does finally get punished. By, I believe it was Trunk. And Dark Suit evening up the score, avenging his teammates, but it's all on Troom is tagged up within an inch of his life and not for long, because Yohi's there. And you can see how close this game is, folks. It's going back and forth. As soon as Avenue break the strats of the ever so drilled in Isuba, they adapt. And so do Isuba. It's back and forth. Literally every time there's that mid push, Isuba eventually adapts. So actually this changes up. Yohi kicking us off in the right direction for all you Avenue fans, taking down Fint, the opposing scope with a sublime headshot onto that sandbag area. And now giving them the advantage into this round. Can the SMGs go aggressive once again? Actually, the AKs are yo-yo here. Made his way straight into hardware, not even worried. As soon as that scope was down, he thinks, you know what? That range element has gone. Let's go for a walkabout. <laughs> yo-yo now does make a little bit of sound coming out of hardware, though. Let's see if he, he's right in between two e super players. So if he plays this right, he could really alleviate the pressure towards B. But Troom finally taking the stand for e super, taking down Zizor, who went so big last round. But Troom's taking up the mantle and going absolutely huge with a sublime headshot straight into Yo-Yo's face. Evening things well into favor for e super. So now Darksu does get tagged up, darts away back into harder. There's going to be a player right next to him. Darksu, turn around. Sexax darts around wow. to punish him for that uh, little exchange that happened earlier on in this game. Takes the AK frag onto him and now only two remain for Avenue. But the B push is definitely on Yohi and Strove. Strolling around towards B. They've got to be careful because Sexax is right behind them and there's a player in that spawn house. I believe it is Misak who's now going on the peak, but I must imagine Sexax will get this frag. Misak takes down Strove and there's only one man remaining. It is Yohi. The scope for Avenue. Let's see if he can actually get anything here. No, he can't because Misak is there. Eyes trained on it. But what a close scoreline for the attacking side to be doing. If, if Let's say you're uh, in Avenue right now. If you're a team Phantasmagoria, you're playing against Isuba, and you're getting this type of round difference and you're keeping it close, would you be comfortable right now or would you be thinking, oh, let's keep pushing the pressure? That's a hard one to call. I think, you, uh, as with any round, you want to try and base stuff spawns. But, you know, yeah. Avenue have real momentum at the moment. They've got a lot of rounds on attack and. But, you know, they're, again, they're just storming into A quite willingly, and this yeah. is really, really good play. Yeah, absolutely sublime play from them, Then you can see there's four men towards that A site, four Avenue, leaving only two free Subaru, which is Explosion Finton, an overlay bug. It's saying there's two Fints. Let's see if one Fint's enough. Picking up with him, going towards that sandbag area. His teammate is in mid. Maybe it's Sex Axe, the man who loves playing around there. It is Sex Axe in blue. There's a hell of a lot of ice trained towards his position. They need to make the odds down. They can't do it because Zizor takes down Finter. It's now all on Sex Axe. And Dark Zoo's there from the top of A. It's getting that elevated position and shuts him down. So seeing an even scoreline like this, I wouldn't be so confident if I was Zizu right now. No, no, Zuba, neither would, would I. What would you be doing? Attack, attack, attack is not easy. Uh, yeah, I can say that from experience. Uh, Isuba look a bit shell-shocked right now, I'll be honest. I, d I don't think they expected uh, Avenue to be quite so aggressive. I mean, mm. I mean, you can say, yeah, it's online and they wouldn't do it at LAN, but still, if, if they can replicate this kind of performance on LAN and just make sure they go together, it's it's really paying off for them. I mean, defense is a really different, different scenario for them, though. I mean, playing aggressive on defense could quite... Well, it could work quite well on Crash, but... Uh, you're going yeah. to have to wait and see. I mean, I, I don't see Isuba coming back from this, I'm afraid. I can see Avenue 
finishing this map off quite comfortably. <laughs> Well, let's hope so, because I do love the underdog folks, and uh, for all of you who said that Avenue are going to win it, yeah, it's looking good so far, unless they have an absolute meal of it on uh, defense. It looks like it could be their map. It is all even, so that's not right, super out. They're a team that's so trained and so drilled in that this wouldn't even be getting to them. Yeah, in the back of their minds, we're going, guys, this is a great scoreline, but it won't affect their play. That is the difference between a good team and a great team, being able to keep that momentum up, keeping that right mindset. And how important is that to you guys? You know, In Team Phas Phantasmagoria, which you know you obviously play for, you've got some players that are really confidence-based. I'd say, you know, Vey is one of them. Zabs are as well, very confidence kind of um, built-up players. If they play well, they don't stop playing well. But as soon as there's that doubt in their mind, does it does it make that much difference to you as a player as well? Does your team depend on really keeping that attitude in the right place? I think everybody helps each other, but it's, it seems COD, it seems like COD 4's curse, really. I mean, if one player, especially the scope, you know, isn't quite confident or is having a bad day, it, it does get to players. But I'm, I'm sure it, it gets to any player in any game or any sport, really. Mm. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of it, Yohi, he did something really interesting, actually. I've never seen it on B-Long before. Maybe you guys have. Um, but he did, or he shot once before the game started and did the reload kind of COD 2 shot. So he got the extra sprint down across to peak the scope, which is, I believe... Finta. Think Finta, that's the one. <laughs> but Dantu now just confir confirming exactly why he's so good at holding A, but not for long because his teammates are being dropped around him. Finta picking up the frag onto him. Troom now absolutely decimating back A, dropping down Yoyo as well as Zizor. And the time has been called by Isuba. The bomb is down and ticking. Now Avenue on the back foot. Yo, he has to go walk about because he's stuck on that uh, sandbag position. And now it's all on Yo because Sexx has put down Stroh, but he darts out. But Troom's there, and what a round from Troom. Really showing how to play, you know, an aggressive SMG role, and we have another timeout. Yeah, I believe it's because of sex acts ping. I can imagine so. Indeed. Ouch, that's not good. So, Lee, do you mind going to some music? Our lovely streamer for today, so uh, we can hopefully get this back underway shortly. Samba, rumba, samba, Brazil fear.
Welcome back, folks. We have been just waiting on Sexax to sort out his connection. It has been uh, questionable at the best of times, but it does seem as though he's back now. So we're just going to wait on the uh, beautiful F key to be pressed. So as you guys said, you do want to follow him as well. So thank you for tuning in so far, and do get this stream link out there. You know, it's such a good game. Avenue, they're playing so well, they deserve to have this game thrown in everyone's faces. So get it out on Twitter. There's a share button right under this whole little box thing that I'm speaking to you from. You know, that screen little button. Press on share, get it on your Twitters, get it on your Facebook, and just get it right out there. Throw it in people's faces and it'll make me a very happy person. So, as I did mention, this is for £5,000. And the winner, the first place team, will walk away with £2,750. That is a massive, massive prize for Call of Duty 4, especially online. And that was really, really kindly brought to you by the, I believe it's the Epic LAN team, who've uh, always run these fantastic LANs in the UK, and now really helping out the COD 4 scene with the uh, sponsors of Fast Host and Game Shadow. So a big thank you to those guys. And do check out on uh, Tech9, the Epic LAN threads. They are fantastic. I've played at one, failed parlously at it too. But, um, you know, if your team thinks, you know, you're up to par of playing at lands, do jump down, get involved, because they're always fantastic. I believe that actually your team may be attending. Team Phantasmagoria might be actually going to Epic 9. Is that in the uh, making there, Chris? Yeah, well, I think we'd like to. I think it's just a case of finding out if everybody's available. But um, Shifty, our manager, he's, he's been very, very keen on trying to get us to, to go there. So fingers crossed sure. we should be attending Epic 9. Yeah, so if you guys do want to keep you know up to date with what Team Phantasmagoria are up to, jump on Facebook, jump on their Twitter. I believe both of them are at Team Fan, P H A N, like uh, like fantasy, but not quite there. They're actually a lot better at Call of Duty 4. So uh, <laughs> we are just waiting on SexX to reconnect now. <laughs> but I do follow those guys. They're a fantastic bunch. They will be attending hopefully the uh, next Ep Epic Land, who have kindly run this event for us so far. So loads of love to those guys. Do get the stream out there, folks. We are just waiting on SexX to find his way back to the magical server. There's one minute left on this timeout, but um, yeah, Chris. So, so how are we doing tonight? Anyway, you know, you're just chilling. You enjoying the casting just so far? Just chilling. Yeah, enjoyed the beautiful weather all day, and uh, headed back in, and probably should be working on my thesis, but actually working <laughs> with cyber gamer okay. related stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, seeing as I might as well just steal this moment to tell, you know, CGI and CGM teams that actually might be listening in to, you know, go on to Cyber Gamer, read the news post that I've just made because there are so many rules, um, especially awesome. new rules that, that we've had to make for this season. So the last thing we want to see and the last thing we want to do on Cyber Gamer is actually, you know, kick teams and, and remove them from the league. So really, really important. Go on there. Check it out. Read the rules. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions as well. I mean, that's what the support tickets there. We've got all these admins ready to answer your questions. So if you're unsure about anything, ask. That's the best thing you can do, rather than leaving it to the last minute and um, le leaving admins to clean up the mess. Really. See, that's what I love doing. That's what you're here for, Chris. Mead. <laughs> but uh, we are going to dive right back into this one. I do believe Isuba only have four. So this could be a massive issue for them, because that could really make all the difference on the attacking side. Both teams have called a timeout before, so they can't do it again. And I think Yusuba are just going to go hell to leather and hope for the best here. As True makes his way towards A with that bomb. Joey kicking the avenue off in the right direction on the defending side now. True almost evening things up. There was a fifth player, but sadly there's not. Dropping that nade onto Darkie's face. And now rotates and thinks about B long. They've got to be slow and careful here, because they do only have three players alive to the four of Avenue. And now I think Yohi's on to what they're up to. He's peaking that B-long area. He's he's rumbled their game, I can imagine. If Troom over peaks now, I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of punishment. He misses the shot. Now that is absolutely unexpected. So Troom darting back out now. Tries to fake out the scope. Goes back down onto B-long, hoping that he'll uh, stop peaking it. I think he's done just that, actually. Troom playing this really well, being very careful now, hoping that the AKs are supporting him through mid. Trunk trying to open up this A area, with Misak looking towards A as well. But that bomb is left at length, and it's leaving Troom to go for a walkabout. So Troom now in the middle of hardware. Can he find the players that are rather close around him? Let's see. Spots one onto that sandbag section. Doesn't get the frag. Yes, he can. There we go. Drops a headshot onto Yo-Yo, and now continues his little stroll around Crash. Can he continue the pace up? Can he continue this little frag story he's got going? There's a player just to his left behind this red car cut, folks. You can see it on the overlay. On the little map in the top left, he sadly can't. That's why he's checking every single corner with 23 seconds left on the board. This B-Push has to come in thick and fast. And now here come the teammates darting down B-Long. And Avenue, our eyes trained. You can see Yohi there in the little bottom of a spawn house, I believe, rattling off some shots towards the B-Bomb. Drops out an 8, 11 seconds on the board. Takes down Trunk. 
Only one man remains because Zizor drops one as well onto Misak. Then Aids are raining in. And they're raining in straight onto Isuba's face. And that is not the way they wanted that to go. But sadly, it's the way the cookie crumbles. So now, all even on rounds, but not on players. Isuba must be feeling really down and out right now with only four people remaining. This is not how you want to be playing these matches. We have so many issues with PB currently. You know, I don't know if that's what's causing the issues with uh, Sex Act, sadly. But um, it has been an absolute nightmare currently. Um, Trunk kicking us off in the right direction, dropping down Yo-Yo, now evening things up. So can Isuba get their uh, teeth into this round? Let's find out. There seems to be a bit more of an A push coming out. Trim feeling confident once again. Goes towards A. Peeking towards Wooden just to make sure there's no one peeking a little bit too heavily and Zizor does just that and does get the uh, frag for it. So Isuba once again on the back foot even after evening things up at the start of the round. It's not going their way. Trunk dropping out that flash to back A to try and stop that peak. Does go for the jump. Doesn't spot anyone yet. But uh, regroups back into lower A. He's feeling confident, but his players have to be careful. Those AKs can't overly peak. They have to be cautious. There's only three of them remaining. And I think the A push has now been called out and is definitely underway, but not before. There is a little bit of spam towards mid and Darky does drop down. Miss second now only two remain for Isuba. Joe, he is tagged up, but not enough to die. Recuperates that health and gets his eyes back towards A. He's feeling as though there's someone on the push, but Darky is on the push as well. He takes down Finter. Trunk picks up one, but he's the last man standing against three Avenue players. But he's right amongst them all. Let's see if he can spot that. I think it was the scope who just died out right above him. And he doesn't. 23 on the board, jumping over that B long wall. And he does put one towards that red car. Can't get the frag. Gets the deagle out. Can he land the shot? On to Joey. No, he can't. And Avenue with another round, just cementing themselves right into the lead here. So, in Rio, we were talking, you know, on the break, saying that, you know, if Avenue keep the pace up, you know, they've got a real shot at this, and these Uber might, you know, have to struggle. Yeah, it's a bit strange. I don't think, I, I, yeah. I'd expect maybe for them to just to restart and actually maybe wait yeah. for the player, but you see, we've just decided to carry on, so it's, it's a bit of a shame, but maybe they feel they can still do it. Yeah. Maybe they do, but it's not the show we want, folks. This is not the game we need, because you know, Avenue deserve to either win against a team with a full lineup to say, do you know what, we beat Usuba fair and square. And that's what you want to walk away with at the end of the day. A new up-and-coming team like this, they want to you know, get the genuine win. Nothing shady about it, nothing you know anyone can put against you. But now, with only one man remaining for Usuba, can he pull it back from the brink to even up the scoreboard? Let's find out. It is Misak. He has actually made his way into Spawn House. <laughs> he held his back he's so long. He's gone through the stew hour demos. He's thinking, do you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm so impressed with the CB player, that CG guy. I'm going to do just that. I think he's actually biding time to allow for his team yeah, to come back is, into the definitely. server. Just to make sure that, you know, Sectax can somehow have a chance here. He's been very careful and, and that that's all it is, it's biding time. You know, as you said, I'm quite surprised he too, but didn't say, you know, guys, let's keep the scoreline as it was, but let's restart. Let's, you know, restart the map yeah. and carry on with the round. This, yeah, sure it's not feasible. uncommon. I mean, it's just standard sort of gamesmanship, really. You know? Exactly. You know, maybe they're just playing for fun and they're actually going to restart. <laughs> I don't know, but I didn't see it. Um, yeah. no, I mean, a bit no, strange, no. but, you know, take nothing away from Avenue. But they gave themselves a commanding lead anyway. Exactly, I think that's the point, you know, I don't think anyone can actually say, you know, Avenue, you only won when there were four of their players. Actually, they've been steaming it since attack, so let's not take anything away from them. But as you guys have uh, demanded of me, you want to watch Sex Snacks. So let's give you the man who's just made his way back into the server. He's on the attacking side for his super now, with the AK, I believe, to hand. Does drop out a little nice and smoke, just to help out his uh, teammates getting to A, but not before Joe, he shuts down well, and that was Misak on the prowl, but not for long. The Spinter does get the reply onto Zizor, but all even now. Let's see if Avenue can hold on with five players now, not just four. Stro picking up the frag onto Troom. Sex Axe does drop down Darky. There we go, that's the man you guys wanted to see, and I can see exactly why now. With only three players remaining for Avenue, all is even. Strove cementing their lead once again. Does see him just dart across in Larry? Surely Sex Axe saw him there. Well, let's find out. There's one man. One man in a with the SMG. I couldn't help saying it then. As soon as it Let's see if Trunk can get the frag. He can't do it. Yo Yo's there with that deagle trained on that little angle he was trying to peek. And it's all on the man who's rejoined, the man that you always want to watch. It is Sex Axe. There he go. Almost had the pick onto mid, but not before Yo Yo peeked out top A and dropped him down with the headshot. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Why, why, why is Avenue doing so well on defense now? They seem very confident on attack because, you know, they had their very uh, dedicated pushes, very aggressive pushes. What's working for them now on defense? Because you can't quite do that. I mean, there's been so few rounds. Uh, <laughs> they've actually. Um, 
I mean, it's so little has happened because of the four players that you see we've had. But I think it's the personal battles. I really do. I mean, Joe, he's winning the personal scope fights. And Finter's mm -hmm. actually, I'm really surprised because I, I really rate Finter. He's, he's not, you know, he's not challenging him anymore. He's, he's trying to stay away from him. And, and Joe, he's been, every time, he, he's been getting him every time he peeks. So it's those personal battles that you get on, on the map. That, um, that you see we're losing and Avenue are winning and just you know on the day that that, that kind of stuff can happen so it's nothing really sure. in particular that Avenue are doing but just winning the you know the the little yeah the personal the battles across the map yeah they're, they're holding their own exactly and that's really impressive to see you know from a team who's so young and so early you know not quite to the caliber, let's say, on paper is Isuba, but they're truly bringing the game to the uh, Isuba side. Isuba finally getting the bomb down on that B site. Joe, he left alive, though. The man who's going absolutely huge on 17 to 9 for Avenue. Let's see if he can uh, crack the last two Isuba players in the half. Does go for the peek onto B. He's being very careful. Letting his teammate get around so he can at least spot one of the darts around the corner. But Finter's there, and Finter's eyes are training in the right place. Zizor does reply, taking down the man, just avenging his teammate. But there's one man standing as Zizor and Trunk in a one on one. And there's Trunk. Trunk, in the best of time, stands up and takes down Zizor to punish him for even thinking of clutching that round. So Dude. now Isuba definitely back in the game, folks. Let's pick it up with Finter. And, you know, I can read chat, guys. I know you want to watch Sex Axe, but at the start round, he doesn't do much. Oh, he's still alive by one, one minute. It'll be on him. But Finter dropping out the nades and smokes. I've got to keep these guys under wraps here because again, so excited about Sex Axe. I believe Finter did tag up Yo Yo there, but uh, not for long. And now I've got to flick across to him because he's made his way through mid, Troom with a frag onto Yo Ho. Yo Ho? Yo Yo, but uh, avenged by Strove. So uh, let's see where we're at. He's super with only three men standing, but one of those men is uh, Sex Axe. He is in hardware right in the middle of the heart of the Avenue defense. Let's see if he can make any of the differences he can because he drops down Zizo, who just shut down his teammate, which was Trunk, leaving it in a two on three. Sex Axe on the prowl, there's still a chance. Bomb is left at that B-long area, not really in the best of places, because I'm sure there's going to be eyes trained on it. And there is just that, there's Strove waiting for his moment to pounce on B-bomb, but where is Sex Axe? He's on top of hardware, just trying to open up this midsection, trying to find out where those last three players are to help his teammate get down B-long and just make that ease into B a little bit uh, more comfortable. But Joe, he does punish him for even thinking of peeking him with a lovely headshot from that lower spawn house onto hardware. Now one man stands for Isuba. And here's Finter, scope to hand. Let's see if he can break that B defense. On with him as well. There's a chance that this could go just his way. Spots on by that car. Does manage to land the shot. Does get tagged up for all of his trouble. But here we go. And there's Strove. Strove doesn't even then peek a further inch. Takes him down with the AK work. And the B pushes. What you know? Can you explain to me why the Avenue B pushes work so well? And why he's simply a case of working together. I mean, Avenue when they did it, they they really sent the SMGs down. Um, but they coordinated it, and you see we're going one by one. They don't seem to be talking to each other, and that's so important nowadays in COD4. You want to be talking to each other as the round is going on, and Avenue seems to be doing it better. Hello? Yeah, I'm still here, I think. Lauren's maybe lagging out. Try and take control. That's uh. uh can you hear me? My oh, we mic can hear you now. Yes. Kind of killed itself. Here to uh, here to save hello. the day. Sorry, guys, my mic just kind of decided to kill itself. It's back in the game, and as am I. <laughs> so let's pick it up with the uh, e super scope finder who did almost get a one on three. There didn't manage to pass away eventually, but missed that kicking off e super in the right direction. Finally dropping an aid onto Yo Yo, but now let's see if they can keep up that pace. An A push coming out, Troom with the bomb towards A Trunk, assisting him with the frag onto the guy who's sitting up by, I believe, at the top of stone. Darky with the prior onto Sex Axe, the danger man for uh, all you fans out there. Finter really evening things up now, giving you super the advantage with only two men standing for Avenue. Is there any hope of them coming back in this? You can see Joe, he trained with an aid, waiting for that A plant, because they're so confident it's going to happen. That could pick up a lovely plus 10 if they don't play it right as Finter gets one. Misak with the other, just in time as well. Finter, you just saved two of your teammates there from a disastrous nade. Now, the attacking side seem to be getting back into things, and, you know, you see we're really picking up the pace. Why do you run us through what they're actually doing on attack now? They seem to get that A push a little bit better. They seem to get the momentum. Yeah, every time they go A, it works better for them. So, I mean, it's really a case of early picks. And just as I say, I mean, you get two nade kills, and as soon as you get those early picks in, yeah, they're, they're rolling into A. Um, so, yeah, early picks, so, yeah. that's the key.
Certainly we see Suba doing just that, and let's see if Trim can keep up that idea. Fintel with another pick onto Zizor. Now only leaving once again two people standing. Yogi getting tagged up from Trim in that top A section. That's quite a confident thing to take on the scope with just a Deagle, but there is a player just underneath the Suba boys. It is Strove, and let's see if he can make all the difference. Spots one, no! Strove, you took too long, and Trim was there oh. assisting that team, and he's already kicking himself because he could have gone huge yeah. then. Yeah, I, I think it's a case of Avenue, you know, th this is where their inexperience is shining through a little bit, because they're so eager to get that last round to close the yeah. map out, that, you know, they're not quite thinking twice about what they're doing. Exactly, and the DP Super can keep up the pressure, and they're doing just that, dropping nades left, right, and centre. As you said, they're such a drilled-in team, and finally it's proving, uh, proving rather potent. Yohi finally with a reply, though, for Avenue, taking down Sexax, our favourite guy of the moment, but Strove with one for himself, onto Trunk, shutting down that A-push, but Troom... Bomb is there, Bomb is going down, and not before the Avenue boys can pick up another frag onto Finter. So now True has to defend this with his absolute life. Yo, he oh, frag oh. onto Yo, Yo, that is not what you want to be doing, because Troom is really punishing you for that uh, mistake you've made by leaving you in a one on two. Let's see if Yo, he can go all stormy on this. Deagle towards eight. <laughs> it's got to be stormy. Any man with a clutch on crossfire as a scope, it's a stormy, so let's find out. Dots into Laurie, does spot one, but Troom's there. And there comes Addy's so super experience. He's going to be kicking himself, Joey, because they managed to get be. that back to three on two, and they, they could have easily closed that round out. So it's all on the last round. Yeah, and I think, as you said, this is the difference between a good team and a great team. The, the difference of making you know the rounds that matter happen. Because you know, I, I, I speak to a lot of the guys you know, from a lot of teams, and a lot of them say, I can't believe how many silly rounds we lose, how many rounds that we give away. And yeah. it seems as though Avenue are doing, doing just that right now, allowing those SMGs into A. I believe, uh, let's find out who is it's Trunk, really. Cutting this could that, be a better uh, round, It could be. They seem to have stayed alive. They haven't dropped to those early nades, that early spam, those early picks. But Trunk has still managed his way into A. There's three players are waiting to greet him. But I'm sure he's just going to hold carefully, hoping his teammates can get in with him. But Strove takes down Misak. Now only four remain free, and they stay alive long enough to get their fellow teammates into A. I believe Zizor was watching that uh, stone push-up, so as soon as Troom thinks about making a move, he may come under a fair bit of pressure. Let's see if he can worm his way through. It's a little bit of a stalemate. There's a man pushing down mid it. It's XX has picked it up with him because he's the man making all the fans go crazy. He is in hardware, and there's a player just on glitch. Let's see if he'll peek it. Not sure if he wants to. I don't want to leave A too long because I know the action's going to absolutely go wild here. And surely Sexax is baffled at the moment. Here's a shot ring out from Glitch. Can he get the frag? Does he want to climb up and make the noise? He doesn't have to because there's the peak. And Yohi does manage to stay alive, but not for oh. long. Surely! Sexax! You missed the absolute sister. Zizor shutting down Troom as soon as Troom thought he could get himself into A. But Darky's there. Takes down the teammate who'd wormed his way in there early. And this is very much an avenue round. And the song goes absolutely huge. Well played. No, they nice. can't but really well played from Avenue there. Nice. Being very dedicated and very, you know, they were so cautious towards the end. That, that was really... Yeah, it shows. Just, you know, stay